Well, hello, hello. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whatever time of day it is that you are joining me, just want to let you know it's such a pleasure. So honored. I'm so honored to have you with me. We have been a series, and I mean we have been in the thick of it. Our series is called What Will You Do With It? We have been looking at a probing question, that probing question, for those of us who have experienced neglectful parents, abusive parents, parents that abandoned us and rejected us. We've been looking a little deeper into it. And although this particular series is not meant for you to delve into your situation personally, every detail by detail, it is to help you to begin to think a little differently about it. Um, in our first part, we um, talked about how incredible you are, that you are a survivor, that you are a miracle, and miracles, signs and wonders are going to flow from you after you have gone through the process of being healed. We talked about how you are deserving of a time to be healed, to go through that time of healing, and that you are um, also deserving of an apology. And so on part two, we apologized and we said that we were sorry about the things that you went through. And again, apologize from the perspective of Christians and how some of us responded to you when you confided um, in us. And um, so now in part three, we, we're looking at the question, were these people who were used as a vessel for us to be birthed in this world, were they parents or were they people who had a sexual uh, relationship and have a child? You know, that is two different things. To be a parent and to be a person who just happens to have sex and it resulted in the birth of a beautiful baby like you, those are two different things. And you know, that is why God, um, he does give us commands to try to protect us from that. Um, that, you know, it is his will, his, his perfect will that parents are two responsible individuals who are committed to him first, who are being led by him, who are educated and who are ready to say yes to um, a baby, you know, and to welcome them into this world. And they're willing to make the sacrifices that they need to make in order to make sure sure that that child's upbringing is healthy. We know that life doesn't always work out that way. And so we have a God who has said that even when your mother and your father, even if you happen to be born to a parent that is neglectful, a parent that is abusive, a parent that is crippled emotionally, psychologically themselves, it says even when your mother and father forsake you, and when they do, God said, I'm going to take you up. I'm going to heal you. And I'm going to allow you to make use of the things that were so shameful and painful that God will use you, as I saw in a post, as someone else's survival guide. Wow. Oh, wow. What a price to pay to be a survival guide. And yet they're so needed. They're so cherished. They're so appreciated. And they're so impactful in this world today. Could you possibly be one of those individuals that God wants to use as someone else's survival God? Can it be you that God wants to give you, first of all, intimacy with him, which is the most important thing. And then purpose to take all that you've gone through and use it. But we know that it's important, it's imperative that you're healed first. And so we need to see, are we willing to go through that process of releasing, um, operating in the role of a victim so that we can put on the coat of a doctor? So today we're going to continue our discussion. I'm going to go ahead and, and turn the music off. And uh, we're going to continue our discussion about were they a parent? Were they real parents? Were our parents real parents? Um, or are they people who just had a beautiful baby, you know, and we're going to look in the scriptures of first Kings, the third chapter, beginning with the 16th verse. And we are going to look in an account. This actually happened, um, of King Solomon. Solomon, um, was the son 
of King David. He was the wisest man on earth. And he used to um, interact with people. People would bring um, problems to him to solve because he had this amazing um, wisdom. And in this particular situation, we're going to see, I believe, the difference between a mother and someone who's a lady who happens to have a baby. And so... um, in this passage, it says that two prostitutes came to him. So these women um, were already in a broken stage. They had already emotionally gone through some things because uh, a, a person who's in a healthy stage emotionally is not going to sell their body. Amen. Because they know that their body is precious. They know that they are wonderfully and fearfully made. So they both had issues with esteem. They may have even come from a broken family. And so they were both um, prostitutes and they came to him. And um, one of the ladies said to him, this woman and I live in the same house. And I gave birth to a son while she was in the house. Then on the third day after I gave birth, this woman also gave birth. So we have two women, and I'll just use these crayons. We have two women who both gave birth um, in, during similar times. So they're, both of their babies are newborns. They live in the house, and they both gave birth. It says here, and they were alone, and there was no one else with us in the house, only the two of us. And this woman's son died in the night. So let's say this lady's son right here died while, you know, during the night. And what happened was uh, she laid on him. She So she didn't even position her son in a place. You know, maybe she wanted him close to her because, um, you know, she was nursing him. But as a mom, she didn't even have she didn't have the insight to protect him and position him in a place where he could be near her, but not in harm's way. So she laid on him. And it says here that she arose at, at midnight and took my son from my side so this lady goes over to this lady's side and she took her son this lady did and so it says here she laid her dead son at my breast so she flipped kids so she discovered that her son was dead she took her dead son put him over here with this lady and then took this lady's son the living son and put him over here and it says that when I arose in the morning, this is the lady telling the story. When I arose in the morning, I was going, you know, uh, reached over to nurse my son and he was dead. And so, but then she said, but when I looked at him closely in the morning, when I really looked at him, I realized that that was not my son. Now they had two newborns newborns sometimes look alike but there's something about a real mom who knows their child there's a connection that a mother has with a child an emotional psychological connection and she knew this baby may look something like the baby that I birthed but this is not my child okay I know my child. A mother knows their child. A real mother has a connection. A real mother has uh, has a protection. They position their child so that they can protect them. So she knew, nah, something is wrong, okay? And then it goes on and said, but the other woman said, no, no, this baby over here, which was really belonging to her, this baby right here is my baby, and the dead baby is your baby. This is what this lady was saying. And so... And she said, no, this mom said, no, the dead child is yours and the living child is mine. And so they're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And so they're both, you know, um, bickering back and forth. And so they've decided to bring the situation to Solomon. And so he's like, wait a minute, let me be clear on what the two of you are saying. You're, you know, you, ma'am, you're telling me that both of you live together. Both of you had children not far apart in time frame. They were both newborns. Both of your babies were laying next to you. Um, Each person's baby was lying next to them. And that this mother rolled over on her baby and her baby, she suffocated her baby. 
Okay, so she didn't even, she wasn't even alerted. She didn't even feel like mm, something's not right. You know, why is it? Something's going on with this one. She suffocated, but things do happen. She suffocated the baby. But now look at the trickery in this so-called mother. So she's still full of trickery. She's, she has, she's cold hearted that she would even take her own baby and put it over here with this mother instead of grieving the fact that here's my baby, maybe calling out to, to God for a miracle, none of that. She decided, no, I'm, I'm going to have what I want. Okay, so we know that her selfishness is not a sign of being a good mom, being a mother, period. She puts her baby over here. She takes this lady's baby. What kind of thoughts can she have? She's cold and calculating. Okay, she takes her baby and puts it over there. And so they're like, yeah, that's what happened. Can you resolve the issue? And so he says to him, okay, I'll tell you what. You know, because how else is he going to, they didn't have DNA during that time. He was like, how am I going to resolve this? And then a thought came to him. He said, bring me a sword, a sword. And he told the women, he said, look, I'm going to divide this living baby in two and give each one of you half of the baby. When this mother heard that, even though she knew that this lady had her baby, she was like, no, don't do that. You're going to kill my child. You know what? I'll give up my child. And I'll just let her have him instead of you killing him. I don't want my baby to die at, uh, in, in response to this situation. That's a mother. She's sacrificing herself. She's saying she'll sacrifice her own happiness, her own comfort, her own opportunity to bless that baby, to love that baby, to cherish that baby, to to train that baby, to instruct that baby. She gave would give all of that up because she wouldn't did not want that baby to die. That's a mother. But look what this other lady says. No, <laughs> go ahead and do it. He shall be neither mine nor yours. Divide them. Go ahead, do it. That lady said it. She's not a mother. She's a lady who had a baby. A mother she is not. This lady over here, even though she had a baby, she is a mother. So it takes more than the act of having sex, which results in a pregnancy and the birth of a child, in order to be a mother. And guess what the wise man did? He said, you know what? You the mother. How could he tell that she was the mother? Simply because a mother is sacrificial. A mother. And we're not talking about just a female that has a baby. A mother has a connection with her child. She's sacrificial. She's giving. She's caring. She would rather that she suffer and go without before her baby suffer. That's a real mother. So even in this story, which I want to invite you to read in 1 Kings 3, 16, down to the 28th verse. I want you to look at it. Let me make sure that it's the 28th, that it stops at the 28th. Yes, the 28th verse. This is a real life story of the difference between being a parent and just being a person who birthed somebody in this earth. It's different being a parent and just being a man who laid down with a woman and had sex, and the result of that was the birth of a child. So I want you to really think about your parents or those who gave birth to you. And that's a part of the pain is when we really think that they were parents. We really think 
that they were, but maybe they were people who were having psychological issues. Maybe they were people with dysfunctions. They didn't know what love was. They didn't know what it meant to be responsible. Maybe they were people who thought they could handle having a child and then when they saw all the responsibilities, they knew that they were not equipped and they just quit. Maybe they didn't know what it meant to be a parent. It's easy to have sex. It's easy to have a baby. But it's a totally different thing to be a real mother, to be a father, to be a parent. I want you to think about it. For those who birthed you, really parents, were they equipped? Were they trained? Were they ready? Were they healthy? Emotionally, healthy, psychologically, or were they someone who may have suffered a dysfunction, that may have even have been abused themselves, that they were looking for love in the form of sex, or they thought societally that they had to have sex in order to feel like they were grown, or they just had no control over their sexual desires. Because it just feels so good that they didn't think about the outcome. That the precious you, who's not a mistake, by the way, no matter how you got here, it was God's intention for you to be here. And God wants to give you what your parents could not or did not give you. God loves you. Even when my mother and my father, even when the individuals who God used to birth the miracle in the form of you, even when they forsake you, God said, I will take you up. I will be a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless. Thus saith the Lord. God bless you. Love and kisses to you.